So, I'm Rob Brooks. This is Paul Anderson. We're going to talk about some potentially interesting topics related to VMS. Okay, what's our first topic then? Well, I think let's talk about some oddities we've encountered over many decades working with VMS. Uh, when Paul and I were building uh, one of the layer products, specifically ACMS, uh, we noticed it was taking about four hours for a product that in general should probably take about uh, maybe a half hour at most to build. And apparently, in looking at the logs from when this product was being built over in India, it was also taking about that long. And it didn't really make any sense because it just shouldn't have taken that long. The entire build for VMS takes one hour. Correct, yeah. So given that, there's no way the product, this layer of product itself should have taken that long. So, Paul, go ahead. Well, I'll go through your experience. I mean, my experience was I found the problem before I had a problem. You encountered the problem. You were, Rob was wondering with some other folks here, why is this taking so long? And we were monitoring the system and taking a look at things, and it was swapping and paging and just thrashing and thrashing, and nobody could figure out why in the world it was doing that. It was a straightforward build, although it took a, it took a while, and nobody could figure out what the story was. Yeah, what happened was Paul was attempting to build a product some time ago, ran into a bunch of oddball problems, and so we set that aside and I started to build it from scratch. So he had encountered this problem that led to the, the slow build and didn't tell me what he had done to fix it, and then right. I encountered the same problem as he said. As it turns out, for some reason, early on in one of the build procedures, uh, of which there were many command procedures involved, there is a reduction of the working set to about 500 pages. Yep. It's not really apparent why that was put in there or when it was put in there, but it clearly had been in there for a very long time. DCL command. Yeah. DCL command that set your working set down Correct. to some hugely yeah. low value. So in any event, once that was eliminated and we allowed the system to have as much memory as it thought it needed, the product built in about 20 minutes. So we're talking a, a substantial reduction in time. The point is, there is no rational reason why this was put in. It didn't make any sense. It had some of the best minds in VMS engineering looking at this for about 20 minutes saying this is stupid. In any event, this is yet another example of understand your build procedures really well and don't take anything for granted. You also need to understand the history of some of these products. They were built on very small machines that were slow by today's standards, didn't have much memory, didn't have much CPU, and so there might have been, I'm just saying, there might have been a good reason why that was put in. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Okay. No, no, I think it's just right. stupid. Yeah. Okay. So, so you encountered something earlier this week that was pretty comical when oh, you were yeah, working yeah. on one of, your, one of your products that you were building. Well, you mentioned that we've had decades of experience, and that's true. I've been writing DCL, for example, for many, many years and always tried to do it the quote unquote right way. So yeah, I think that yeah, might have been, yeah, that might have been why I never encountered this. So I was building, I was using a procedure to build our new TCP IP stack and we're changing that around to update it and found that I wasn't, wasn't matching up. I was reading a file and it was, the data I got from the file wasn't making any sense whatsoever. I looked at the contents of the file, it had this content, but yet the procedure was getting that content. Well, it turns out that in one procedure there was an open command, and in another procedure that was called by that one, it was using the same open command. And we found out that DCL... Well, now when you say the same open command, you're saying... Same exact command. It was opening up a file for read, and using the same uh, name, same file handle or logical name for both of them. Open, slash read, F1, Blah, blah, blah. So you're saying the file spec was identical. There wasn't like yes. a directory in one and not a directory in another. Correct. So literally the Correct. same, the same line. Correct. Of yeah. And this code actually, in the interim, did a set default. So it changed directory. It was supposed to be reading from a file over here, but I was getting the contents of a file over here. It turns out the DCL. Sure, it wasn't over there. It could have been over there. Yeah, yeah but it wasn't. It wasn't. No, it was okay. over there. Yeah, okay. So it turns out that the open yeah, we command. Think that's funny. It really we think that's funny, funny, but it's not. It's not. I got yeah. It, yeah. That was the first attempted joke. No, it's going to be worse. Yeah. yeah. So, so the open command apparently is ignored. So what happened was it doesn't open up a new file. It just oh, it, you say open it. It already it notices there's a file already open on that channel and just ignores you and just keeps on going. As it turns out, yeah. this actually is documented yeah. behavior in uh, not the online help, but actually the DCL dictionary. And this right. generated a lot of interesting discussion in the uh, Usenet News Group Compo was VMS when right. we reported it. And it right. 
to this minute, it's probably still generating a lot of interesting discussion. Dozens and, and, and dozens and dozens of comments from people who say, it should work that way, no, it shouldn't work that way, no, you shouldn't change the behavior. Because the problem is, if we fix the issue, it's going to break people's well, applications. To, to be clear, the problem among the problems is that it effectively doesn't return any status. It effectively ignores that second open. There's no error indicating channels already open or anything like that. So it's basically an ignored open. And yes, we I think we agree that that should have been better do better documented in the online help, which is not which we should probably right. take care of. Right. But specifically back in the day there probably should have been some sort of error return. Right. Uh, as has been mentioned uh, in the news group, a reasonable thing to do before every open is to do a close slash no log, which will ensure that the file you expect to be opened is in fact being opened. So that's actually a reasonable thing. Except if your application depends on such things. And this is explained to me by our executive vice president of Info Server Engineering, Doug Gordon. Doug Gordon, who said, well, maybe you have a, let's see, where should I place the command procedures to make you happy? Over There's there. a command procedure here, which has an open. No, There's a command procedure here which may rely on it being opened by this guy, or it may rely on it opening it up itself. And so you're actually depending yeah, on you need, it. You need to that pass way. some state to like a flag or something like that. So there may be a valid reason, but we thought it was a stupid DCL. Yeah, speaking mistake. of stupid, let's talk about what? our MSA controller. Yeah. Let's. Okay. Go ahead. There was one day when Rob walked over to my desk and he goes, hey, how come our Sunday image backup is still running? Now this was Tuesday afternoon. I said, well that seems pretty odd that our, it usually finishes in 18 hours on Sunday we do image backups of all the layered product disks. Why is it taking so long? Well we found out that it wasn't taking so long in general, it was only certain VMS LUNs or devices, you know, $1, $DGA, some number, that were taking a long time. Some were taking five or six hours when they should have taken like 10 minutes. Not every LUN, just some LUNs. So all this stuff was pretty weird. And the array wasn't showing us any problems, any errors of any sort. Uh, there were some informational messages that said, yeah, I found something here and I fixed it. Don't worry about it. And now, then, these informational yeah. messages were in the array itself, not yes, in the vacuum. Not a, not a, right. And yeah, specifically, the MSA GUI has the ability to look at various logs and the errors themselves were classified as informational. I mean, there, there could have been more severe errors of varying types and, and yet these were not. These are just simply classified as informationals. And they're only coming out pretty much on the order of a couple times an hour. So and, we, it's for yeah. one, and it was for one specific disk. The, uh, these LUNs are RAID 5, so there is, and there's a, there's a pool of disks that were carved into various LUNs and so this happened to be a bunch of RAID 5s. And as it turns out, there's a specific spindle that was spewing errors. Again, just a few times an hour, yet clearly there is bad stuff happening continually because every operation uh, to this set of disks, or well, every operation to the RAID 5s, any RAID 5 set that included this one bad spindle was taking forever. Right. The problem is, this stupid array didn't actually let us know that there's an error, just an informational. Right. Now, once we replaced the physical disk, everything went back to normal. Yep. But the bottom line is, there is no actual real error log. If you looked at the severity, it was simply an informational. And it's, right. uh, it, was, it was a simple thing to replace, but it was incredibly non-obvious. And one of those annoying things that just still has us talking about it a week later. Well, right. Well, it's a simple thing, but it takes a lot of time to figure out. And then when you finally get to the answer, it's like, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of things you don't want to do, why don't you tell us about that phone conversation you were part of a long time ago? Well, let's see, what category does this go into? It goes into... Say things not to do. Or things not to things, do. Things about which to be careful. So I worked in a group once uh, in a division of digital, and our responsibility was printers, among other things. So there was a hotline up in Merrimack, New Hampshire, uh, that received calls from customers, pre-sales customer support. They got a call from a big customer of ours who wanted some information about a new printer product coming out. They had some technical questions. Okay, so uh, this fellow said, well, who's the product manager? I said, oh, that's, you know, let's just say it's Joe Smith. Let's call up Joe Smith. So I was on the phone. He was on the phone. We conference called in Joe Smith and got his voicemail. It was a Friday afternoon, 3 o'clock, so we weren't that surprised he wasn't there. So I said, yeah, you know, he's not there. Yeah, the right hand or left hand? 
uh, I actually moved my hand up like this to indicate I was on the, on okay. the phone. Yeah. So I said, because uh, I'm right handed. Yeah, we thought that was funny, but again, it, it, it wasn't. It was yeah. So we had it, you know, I said, hey, you know, Joe Smith, it's, it's, you know, Fred and I calling about this product, blah, blah, blah. We'll talk to you on Monday. Bye. And then we hung up. And then this fellow and I from the hotline kept on talking. And what he were we talking about? He had some complaints about this fellow. And he, he was saying some things like, ah, you know, this guy's a jerk, or he's, you know, he's pond scum, or some, you know, some insults and stuff. And I said, yeah, yeah pond no, 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 scum's no, no. about the lowest insult one could, yeah. yeah. I can't, well, lowest that we can say on YouTube, yeah, right? Yeah, anyway. So, blah, blah, blah. We, we, we had our conversation, and all of a sudden we heard this beep. Was it that pitch? It was. Okay. And I said, and that length also. So I said, I say, Fred, is there anything on your system that makes that beep sound? He goes, no. I said, oh, let's hang up. So we hung up. And we talked again. And yeah, it's a good thing you said that, because you wouldn't have figured out to hang up had you not said, let's hang up. That's right. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Good. We're, we're, we're proactive. We're, you're on so, top of it. On top of it. So we, uh, we started our conversation again on a different call. And of course, surmise that we recorded the entire conversation on this fellow's voicemail, this product manager's voicemail. Where uh, the other guy was trash talking him. Yeah. And if yeah. I recall, the other guy who was doing the trash talking was a provisional employee who was hoping he to was. become a permanent employee. He was. So he spent all weekend worrying about this. In the meantime, I sort of forgot about it, thought it was sort of funny. On Monday morning, I walk in, there's a phone call from the product manager. I bet he was real happy. He was happy. He was a nice fellow. I went down and talked to him. So we talked about the customer. In person? Yeah, in person. Know. In person, yeah. He looked on the next floor down. So we talked about the question the customer had, and we went over the product plans and the introduction and what features they wanted and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I said, okay. And I got ready to go. And he said, and you know your entire conversation on Friday went up on my voice Did he actually point and say he did. he did. He did. He did. And I said, yes, yes, I know that. And uh, at that moment, I was very glad that I hadn't said anything really bad about this fellow. Uh, and I said, well... Didn't you say he had a bad hair day or something? Well, on the, on the call, I, did. Yeah. I said he was having a bad hair day. And we all have bad hair, but... Yeah. 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 Um, so, he, his tone changed. And I said, well, Joe... It was a Friday afternoon, and he goes, my professionalism does not end on Friday afternoon. When does it end? Mine never ends, Rob. Yeah. You wouldn't be familiar with that, but it never ends. Um, so, um, yeah, now funny. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, he went over the whole thing, and, uh, you know, this guy and the guy who answered the phone, you know, they got together, and they okay. kissed and made up. Yeah. They yeah. did. They sang Kumbaya. Hey, Josh, we call HR? We should, yeah. yeah. But he, this guy eventually, you know, got to be full time, and okay, so it was a lesson to be learned. Yeah. That, that took a lot longer to discuss that one than I would have expected. You, you drank it out well. I did. Yeah, okay. Thank you. What else do you have? What other story do you have? So, are you out? No, I am not. We can talk about Clue Dollar Common. <laughs> so Clue Dollar Common yeah. is a mechanism that was developed. I don't know if it was developed, but it, it showed up in VMS Engineering and Digital. Who knows when? Probably back in the early 90s after the Alpha architecture came out as a mechanism to try to have an architecture independent common uh, directory structure in a VAX Alpha cluster. Because typically for a cluster, you know, you've, got, you've got system disks that is architecture specific. This was a mechanism to try to have files, presumably non images, that you know, could be shared across architectures. Yeah, um, configuration data, which, different which is, files which is, for And so what you would yeah. do is you would insert the include our common directory structure somewhere in the search list in the, uh, you know, between sys-specific, sysroot, etc. And it's a reasonable thing to do. It sounds it's, good, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds great. Well, maybe. The problem is if it's not properly implement, implemented, it can lead to a lot of confusing and misleading error messages. Uh, typically what people will do is only implement a subset of the required directories and by that I mean you need to repl to do the clue dollar common mechanism correctly you need to replicate every single directory in that common directory structure which would be 
you know, not just sys MGR, sys EXE, but have to be sys UPD, sys, sys HELP. Which I guarantee no one does. Correct. And so, yeah. the, the, so the biggest problem is if you're look, doing a directory using, say, sys dollar common or sys dollar library or something like that, and you wind up having the clue dollar common insertion in the middle of that, and the file doesn't exist, and it happens to be in one of the directories that actually was not replicated, instead of getting the expected file not found, you wind up getting a directory not found. And it can show up in the weirdest ways. And it's this, one this, of those yeah. oddball things. It's, it's not, it's unclear if it's actually a supported thing to do. Uh, in general, yeah. you would probably say that if altering the system just like that is not supported. However, this is the sort of thing that's been discussed by VMS engineering employees in public areas, so it might be somewhat quasi viewed as quasi supported, and I don't think it's ever been documented. It's in, well, it's mentioned in a number of places, and I don't either, think it's mentioned in any document. Yeah, document don't, uh, in documentation we published. Yeah. Yeah. In any event, as, as an example, a, a way to do things. This is the. But sort it has very sharp edges. We had a, we had an example in the new TCP/IP stack where we're looking for an optional file. And if you didn't find the file... Not, not an options file, but an no, optional, an optional file. file, which may or may not exist on your system. Okay. And so if it didn't exist, okay, it went on and did something. Uh, and this is where the directory not found error got returned instead, which was a fatal error, and which wound up to be an opcom message. And it's like, why is it saying directory not found? It's an optional file. But this is why. Clue dollar common was in there. And so it, the directory message was higher than a, a file message. So what's the moral of the story? Don't do it. Yeah. Don't use yeah, Pluto. Don't, do it. don't fiddle around with your definitions of sysdollar sysroot or sysdollar common by sticking another uh, search list item in that list. Uh, you may think you're solving a problem, but you're going to cause more. And this, this took a while. The first, I hit this two or three times over the years. And it stumps you each time because you forget the, 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 the symptoms aren't the same every time. And so you really forget that it's this particular problem. And then when you finally get down there, you start saying it, not nice words. Yeah, so the fact is the, yeah. the cluster that Paul and I administered jointly, one of the first things we did when we took it over was eliminate any vestige of clue dollar commons. So we don't have this problem in our cluster. Other people in this company remain nameless. run into this problem periodically, or you know, again, they'll run into a strange issue and they'll not know what the problem is. And, oh, we know what it is, that's clue dollar common. Ha, 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 we don't have that problem. Yeah. Now, yeah. Speaking of sharp edges, and this is a problem for which you don't, we don't have a particularly good solution, uh, DCL support for integers is limited to 31-bit signed integers. And as various uh, things get bigger, DCL has a problem representing them. Specifically, say for volumes, for disks, if you use uh, f dollar get DVI, say with the free blocks item code, for volumes that are larger, for volumes that have more than a terabyte of free space, you get a negative number return from GetDVI. And we don't, there is no actual solution to this. DCL can never represent this accurately. You can kind of play around with it if you want to use strings, but you can't easily solve this problem. This is one of those things that is going to take some time to sort out, but again, we don't have an answer. But you, we've attempted to fix certain things like VMS install and PCSI so they can try to overcome the DCL limitation. But the fact is, if you're writing DCL, this problem can't be solved. So that's just yet one of those uh, annoying things for which we don't have a solution. And people don't typically use it for big arithmetic tasks, but again, it's, it's the way the world has changed. Yeah. And stuff is bigger than yeah, right. numbers. And with that, we are mercifully done. Are we? We are, yeah. Thank you. Thank you and good night.